No, that's fine. And you can find it there and share it. Um, live, bitches. I'm going to have to report your post, sir. Do not report my post, <laughs> please, ma'am. I say bitches with love. <laughs> Will you aim the phone at whatever is happening? Sure. So if, for example, something unexpected happens. That's the phone fall. Because the phone falls. The phone did fall a few times last time. Right. I'm going to be editing the video. We can pretend that we haven't started yet. <laughs> So, I'm going to count down from five down to one. When I reach one, I will point at you. You will clap. Hey. A lot. Hey, there's Steve. Hey, Steve. Hey. <laughs> and then the show will begin. Five, four, three, two, one. The best time to write is now. The best place to write is here. The best person to write is you. Thank you very much. I am Ezreal Johnson, founder and director of Writing Nights. How are you doing out there? We have a great show tonight. We have a sword fight brewing between Daria Quinn and Finn Thrace. Yeah. Whoa! lists. One recorded, one not recorded. Um, we also have books for the Grand Showcase. Uh, those are $15. We also have banners that if you were like, hey, I want to be part of the Grand Showcase magic, you can have a banner because I don't want to have them anymore because I'm not going to use them for anything because I didn't see 2018 on them. <laughs> and we're not going to have another one Grand Showcase this year. Maybe next year. All right. Is anyone out there? I can't hear anyone. Woo! Excited! Come on! Great night tonight. And to kick off the great night. So we usually wait until the, sh the uh, show has already started to do our open call, but I feel like changing up a little bit. So is anyone interested in, you know, laying out a challenge for someone else in the sword fight? Wait! What? 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 I don't know. And in this corner, the bell of the South 
will dispel northern myths about South White sharing her wit. Oh, Edit <laughs> that out, future ass. In this corner, the Belle of the South will dispel northern myths about the South while sharing her wit, wisdom, and worldview, Renee Sanders. seconds till the end so it'll sound something like like that just so the uh, performer knows that they have 10 seconds in the round so five four three two one go a poem to the blood on my hands I've been told that murdering the English language is a crime against humanity it might be more accurate to note the ways that enforcement of standardized English is itself a crime against the people. We judge the y'alls and libraries, don't even ask about ain't. We celebrate the liberated poets who cuss just the right amount, but scoff at the performer who done wrote this shit. Education is a basic human right, we say, but fail to fund it equally in each zip code. We dismiss the dialects of subcultures as ignorant or unprofessional while claiming to be colorblind. We say everyone can speak properly, punishing those who can't or don't fucking want our rules. The blood on my hands is from the social media spelling and punctuation corrections. The blood on my hands shouts at me from years as a college writing center tutor when I focused on how someone constructed sentences instead of helping them hone their, hone their voice. No surprise that now, some of them choose silence. The blood on my hands is for each side eye 
rigid stare or eye roll at people who dared speak their own dialect in my presence. For each time, I chose patronizing platitudes to English language learners instead of listening to their words. The blood on my hands might not have, have dripped from my knife, but it may have come from the suicide blade of someone I made feel small, whose lives are less important to us than perfect execution of English. Thank you.
So you, she can't feel good about this starry night. There she is in the cotton club of imagination, dancing with an old lover she just met. Draped in one another's desperation on the dance floor, this moment and memories collide. Tears well up, but she is not going to cry. Instead, this time, she'll down her sorrows with water jet dams. In a magnanimous gesture, she buys her dance partner a beer. He whispers sweet nothings in her ear. She can't help herself. She has a laugh. But there is a hollowness to that giggle, which gives her a chill. For a fleeting, she considers taking him home for the comfort. But she knows at the black of the dawn, she will wish she were alone. So, tossed coin in the case, she exits waltzing down the avenue of lost love, accompanied only by the trill of the sadness, unable to escape the failure even of her fantasy. She strains to hold that bluesy melody as it echoes through her soul. Now, we're going to switch gears a little bit, and I'm going to tell you how the South views people that are a little different. Those that may be having a little dementia or may be having a hallucination. And this is from Julia Sugarbaker from the Design and Women show, which she described for a New Yorker about the South and their people. This is the South, and we're proud of our crazy. We don't hide them up in the attic. We bring them right on down into the living room and show them off. No one in the South asks, do you have crazy people in your family? They ask which side they are on. <laughs> <laughs> and when Julia was asked which side her was, was on, she said, both sides. <laughs> A round of applause for Renee. How are you feeling, Skylar? I'm feeling great, but who I really feel bad for is the judges. They have, this, they have to get this right. They all they'll get it right. If they don't, I might have a hissy fit, y'all. <laughs> but we know how, you know, we can handle you with that. Put them in the living room. <laughs> Yeah, we're clapping you up in the head. <laughs> <laughs> How's everyone feeling about the sword fight? Woo! Yeah! Woo! All right, for this third round, Skylark is going to call the toss. Heads or tails? Heads. Tails, Renee, you get to go first. Woo! 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 All right. Remember, this is, this is the four minute round. Five, four, Three, two, one, go. You don't know, huh? The Yankees are hot. They have been experiencing a heat wave like they have never seen, defined by the weatherman as three days in a row over 90 degrees. A heat advisory, they have been warned against the sun. Remain indoors where you can breathe air that has been conditioned. They're afraid of the heat, bless their icy cold hearts. My confused up to who Yankee Blue friends, the weather report does not define hot. Hot is Maggie the cat on the tin roof. I know this hot. From spending steamy August days in the state of Williams, Tennessee, back when there was no cool air to be pumped, when ladies kept their fans close at hand to flip the stifling puffs of air across their dampened appearance. You don't know how my doodle dandy, but perhaps you are getting a glimmer of the wine. For that which you made fun of for oh so long, the southerner and his slow-moving ways and draw, he 
she was hot. A long, tall glass, a sweet iced tea out on the veranda, that is the refuge to be had. A languid mood, glass to lips, a cold sip glad, bathe in the throat and beyond. The buzz of the big old porch ceiling fan overhead, the cadence of the cicadas riding on what you wish was a breeze. Now that is hot. Now the glass of tea is touched to the cheek and the forehead before taking another long, cool swallow. And when the sweat begins to be up between her breasts, well, she'll open one, well, maybe two buttons of her blouse so that the precipitated drop from her glass can trickle its own cool stream down and in between. She waves her waves and dabs her rose water lace pinky across her glistening cleavage before lifting her hair from the back of her neck in a vain hope that a breeze she might encounter. That boy southern gentleman takes a goal of that fine hot air. He does his best to cool it before blowing it across her bare neck. Now that, my darling, is hot. And so, Ohio, in other parts know, when you find yourself sweltering, you better learn the ways of summer sultry days. Otherwise, that heat may bring you to your knees. Not so funny now, is it? The South may have the last laugh after all. We told y'all we'd rise again. And so we have with the sun. <laughs> Miss Elena, why do you dance so slow? Miss 
water, this knife cut rope, and Miss Elena stopped dancing as the fairies went away. Miss Elena is on the ground now, and she doesn't look like herself. The fairies didn't stop the monsters with lots of feet. The red footprints go everywhere, even up Elena's torn dress and under her face. Wake up, Miss Elena! I made the fairy house real strong, so you can climb up with me. Miss Elena, it's been a long time since that night. I think I see you in lots of places. I hug myself now real tight like you did, but it isn't you. I met Esme. She was quiet and sad. I showed her my new loose tube, but even Ratoncito Perez doesn't make her smile. Esme lives with her cousins now because the monsters left red footprints on her daddy, too. My daddy said it's not safe for me to see Esme again. I stay awake in case the monsters come back. Nobody really sleeps now. I was just the last one to wake up.
<laughs> he just really wants to tie. <laughs> we just. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I don't want to pick a winner. And then, and then, and then, to die. All right. Do you carry that around? I was going to introduce her at the beginning of the show. I forgot. I also forgot to do the promo. The bell one. She was on the show. She was just. All right. If Renee and Skylight will stand up on either side of me. Drum roll, please. Before I read the scores, let's give them both a round of applause. <laughs> I'm 
really you can solid. stick that in the well. If you touch a good toss, just yeah. right in the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Javelin throw. <laughs> I'm not going to play favorites, but I'm really hoping somebody can start counting wins. Hey, I'm glad you made it for like five seconds. No, no we're staying. No, you're staying. I wouldn't look at it just so we can have somebody pass it back and forth. Like, yeah. Somebody wins and then somebody beats them. Because okay. if somebody out of town oh, wins, it's going to be hard. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I was memorizing this. I hope I didn't realize you could like bust them out. Right. Right. Yes. 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 Yes.
Anybody watching? Nope. <laughs> Me. Yeah, you, you said you were watching and then Because I no shared it. Yeah. Or I tried to. I don't know if it actually shared. I think once I click on something, I think mean, that yeah. was actually there. You, can, you can either watch a video <laughs> or if you click on it, you no longer I click to share it. Yeah. I don't know why it still says I'm still on there because I'm not. Yeah. Well, he's, I was at work, he thought I was actually doing something on it once. <laughs> like, yeah, nah, I wasn't even looking. <laughs> it just so happens my phone just keeps it there when I play. Um, I don't know if it's pushing it. your phone? If it was stealing off you or... Yeah. I just thought it was agile in these shoes. I started writing. Okay. So it doesn't really matter. Well, it's charged up enough that I can take it off. Okay, cool. And I'll hand you, I'll hand you the coin and you can record them and wrap on um, something. The last I'll, probably, I'll probably give you one. What was the last thing you've done with the album? The last time was the first time I did it. And then, oh, that was so hard. I almost told you. Well, yeah, I asked you a little support. I thought that he could, well, he could do that on the first session. Right. Mixed with a comedy act, mixed with a storytelling set, 
mixed with the UFC fight, mixed with the WWE show, and you'll get the idea. Call it ultimate writing or mixed literary arts. What you are about to see is a head-to-head -head battle of wits and words with a bit of trash talk sprinkled in. We take two fighters, put them in three-round competition. Round one, two minutes each. Round two, three minutes each. Round three, four minutes each. Fighters can squeeze as many pieces into the round. Example, if they can squeeze a haiku into two minutes, go for it. However, there is no grace period. When time is up, fighters must stop or they are disqualified. Rounds are judged on a 10-point must system. Winners get 10 points, the loser gets 9 points or less. Judges are asked to judge based on six main qualities. Clarity of speech, efficient use of time and passion, word choice, impact, and originality. A seventh quality the judges should apply to themselves is consistency. If they judge one fighter on a certain quality, they should use the same rubric with the other fighter. While the sword fight program asks fighters to portray characters, all scores are legitimate and contribute to sword fight's persistent and ever-progressing storyline. Let's introduce the judges. <laughs> Spotted shirts with birds and hotels and cars <laughs> and plants. Welcome, Josh. <laughs> and they can't apply, no, not really. In plaid shorts and white shirts <laughs> and hats, Black Rain. <laughs> Black Rain also runs an open mic at Monroe Community Center on like Third Street. Third Street, Monroe. Third Street, Monroe. Third Street Monroe. So yeah. every Monday night, Correct. go check out his, his open mic. And in the gray shirt, my wonderful, beautiful niece, Dora. <laughs> now the fighters. You will join me, fighters. Pick a chair, doesn't matter which one. In this corner, Standing double stacked, fun size, the Captain Marvel of Medias, the Kala of In Your Scars and Bread, Starbuck Incarnate. Yes. So grab your gun and bring in the cat. Welcome, Finn Thrace. In this corner, she is the Wicked Witch of Warcraft, the Larry Policia of Canton, Ohio, and your feminist hero. Daria Quinn. They'll be using that pencil as a cane. Yes. And for those of you who don't know why, on Facebook Live, why I'm holding a, a pencil, it's our upcoming championship tournament as to loot in January. Which you can look up on our site, writingnights.com. Are you ready for a sword fight? We are here. We will 
You can't drink or vote, but hey, you can fight for your country. I have a lot of problems. See, I don't know really how I don't know really how to escape. So run to Uncle Sam. You are one of the same. Everyone will be the same, and you will be loved. Uncle Sam will love you. He will embrace you. He will hold you and mold you and love you. Now go fight us in war. Soon. 
consumed and consumed by those with the money to spend and the stroke to make things happen. Nudity on the big screen at 19 in order to assure that you're still getting work at 24. A quick bit of dick on the producer's casting couch. Hey, maybe if you're good, he'll put in a good word. Assure you a career well into your 30s, provided you can keep yourself looking good and thin and willing to fuck the producers again and again. No was never a barrier for you. Yes was only a key to the gate for us. And once you were finished taking what you wanted, you only let us through the gate if you liked the way we fucked. We never had a position to negotiate from. It was suck my cock or never work in this town again. This system rigged by you and your dupe conspirators, vying for prime pussy real estate, getting in on the ground floor. You stake your claim on women as if they were the new world and you were Christopher Columbus. Pledge your flag on this pussy that was never yours to claim. You exploit and manipulate and control and destroy and we call this concept rape culture. But you call it business as usual. The environment fostered by your self-declared entitlement to our bodies puts us on this casting couch within your fingers' reach, forced to place a price on our bodies and souls to appease your greasy, creeping fingers, or go back home and wait tables at a diner where the patrons all grab at your ass. Hollywood is just an exaggerated example of the same sexist system found more subtle in more subtle ways outside of it. Advancement comes to those with open legs and easy legs. This is not the price for work that what anyone should be forced to pay, yet this is the gate in place before us to earn a living wage. My body will never belong to you or any other man, for I am not property. You will not be allowed to take me by force, tax-free, to raise a flag or plant a tree. I reject your claim as the natives rejected Columbus. I reject your gospel as a heretic rejects Jesus Christ. Keep your dick pics and your indecent proposals. I will forge my own way. I'd rather fail on my own than be your successful little fuck boy. <laughs>
kid got our veils heavy with grief. Such an outpouring of grief, both vocal and physical, collective mourning. When did we forget to mourn? When did I forget to mourn? As a country, as individuals. Where is my grief? Why do I not mourn? Really it comes, but it comes in waves, sobbing, sobbing softly for all of us, for humanity, for all of that we have lost, for that old man, old woman, daughter, mother, throwing themselves on the ground over and over and over, screaming, grabbing their heads. The loss surrounds us forever, as it always has. For your 
your service, I really wish you wouldn't. Use your voice to speak up, to stand out. Use it to change the conversation, the perspective. So don't thank me, just listen.
So. Woo! 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 Birthday party! An extra guilt trip for people who are like, I don't go. Like, we have to go because it's my birthday. So. <laughs> <laughs> the intended tournament will have at least five rounds: a one minute, a two minute, a three minute, a four minute, and a five minute. Hopefully, hopefully enough people. Could be single, double, and it just depends on how many people we get. So. How many of you would like to see both Daria and Finn in this tournament? Woo! How many of you would like to see Renee and Skylar in this tournament? Woo! How many of you would like to see yourself in this tournament? Woo! And now that you've all said that, there will be gra gra there will be cash prizes starting at I believe ten dollars for the fourth place, twenty-five for third place. I think. Twenty-five. Dollars. Anyway, hundred dollars is the grand prize, so that's. Are you gonna clap for that? Woo! I can. I was about to. Did you bring flyers? I did not bring flyers. Okay. Well, uh, Ready Max and Sketches, Stories, and Sounds are also doing a fourth Wednesday. Uh, reading in Kent at the outpost, so you all should come to that too. Yes. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Sound system. <laughs> yes, yeah, much better than this one. It actually is pretty good job. <laughs> We're working on it, we gotta raise money first. So. And I think they have real doorways. <laughs> yeah, they really have real doorways. Real doorways. Real doorways. Real and two uh, bathrooms and a full bar. Are the, are the judges yeah, all what? scored up? <laughs> yes. Judges yes. all scored up? Good. Oh, well, it looks like Josh is still scoring. Still noting. So yeah. Anybody who wants to sign up for the open mic should do so because we're going to start that next. Anybody back there? Guys, bring in poetry? No, not today. <laughs> next time. Especially since it's in 
like something that sounds like ayahuasca, Arizona. Well, maybe the smartest thing about it is they decided to hide. <laughs> Alright, are we ready to find out who won? Yes. Yeah. Alright, those people take attention to one.
Cut off the head, two more will go back in its place. The more you clutch your pearls, the more brazen we become. Because making you mad is how I personally get my picks. So, if you want a happy ball, <laughs> here it is. And this is why it makes art the politics. <laughs> I don't know how many of you are familiar with WWE, and uh, those who don't care, or this is not going to make any sense to you at all, but there was a wrestler named Enzo Amore who got fired for allegedly raping a girl in Phoenix. And when the cops couldn't come up with enough evidence to prosecute, he decided to put out a rap song attacking his victim, claiming he was going to sue her for defamation of character, and then tried passing himself off as a champion of women and how women should not be making false ac accusations. It basically, he's just a cute piece of shit, so this is about it. Mm -hmm. A consensual penis, you'd say. <laughs> That's funny. That's not the story I heard. The story I heard was that the cops ended the investigation due to a lack of evidence. Quite the same thing as an exoneration. In the US alone, only six out of a thousand rapists ever see a jail cell. The fact that you would probably that you would probably escape free of rape charges was almost always a guaranteed certainty. But that doesn't make your penis consensual, nor does the mental capacity of your victim. Every time a woman accuses a man of rape, the world immediately attacks the woman first. No other crime gets this sort of public reaction. If a person is accused of robbery or murder, no one is crying out, innocent until proven guilty, while simultaneously making it out as if the victim actually wanted to get robbed or murdered. Like, well, he, maybe he wanted to get killed, but they the got bodies from the worse the next day. <laughs> we treat our rapists as if they were above the crime. You don't even need to be a celebrity for the world to let you off the hook, but it certainly never hurts. Man, you got lucky, don't you understand that? They figured your victim was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, so the cops decided that seeking justice wasn't worth the time. You fucking raped the girl, dude. Women don't just lie about this shit, and they sure as hell don't go public when they do. You weren't proven innocent in the court of law. You were the beneficiary of a system that doesn't take rape seriously. And in the wake of this revelation, you put out a song threatening to sue your victim, all while claiming that so-called false allegations hurt the Me Too movement claiming to be an ally of women, when all of your actions and lack of insight show that you don't care about yourself. You claim to be the real one, certified G, bona fide thug. You're a liar who brags about his consensual penis, when the truth of the matter is, you're a racist. You got away with it. Woo! Meth house you aren't allowed to stay at anymore. 
lying on your back in the snow. You claim to be counting stars, but I'm pretty sure you are the only one who sees them. This ethanol leaves you so warm, your unemployment checks, like your skin melting in a great, in a gutter caked with gray sludge. Three. Mom doesn't know how to look at you anymore. Your whole body is coated in a layer of swollen skin. You talk about your blood pressure, when, and when you do, your veins create hills across your skin. I think this means you're going to die soon. Everyone will have seen it coming. The coroner will wring out your liver, dripping four loco, vodka, homemade wine. They will say, what a shame, and file your body and their memories next to all the other alcoholics they cut open. And they will have dinner with their families after. Dad will blame himself because he let you drink at 16 and Mom will stay as cold as your body until she's alone in her recliner, flickering TV channels, her nightlight. Then she will sob and heave and swear she can still smell the shampoo she washed your hair with when you were two and wrestled your brother into the mud. No one will be there to hear her cry. The sobs won't be from surprise. She already misses you so much. Or, sometimes, Mom will still pay you to fix parts of our broken home. On your hands and knees, expertly spreading caulking along the crack where little bowls slip beneath the house. This really should have been done years ago, you grunt, half laughing. You look up at me and smile. Your eyes are clear, not swirling toilet bowls or a thunderstorm with no lightning. I'm afraid I've looked too quick. Like I might mistake you for the two-year-old in the frame holding up his dump truck to show you how it works. In these moments, I'm tired of being mad at you. My therapist likes to ask if you were a trigger and say I've been clicking that down on my own for years. Instead, I talk about the scrapbook of your drawings I still keep hidden under my bed. How the reflection of your face in beer bottles looks the same as the one on the TV screen when you rescue Princess Toadstool. You are still the picture tucked in the frame, even though you've shattered the glass. Thanks. Anyone else want to be recorded on the open mic? Like, you know? I'll go. All right. Yeah. I wasn't going to, but you blessed me so much. Oh. <laughs> Spell that for you. It's B L A K R E I G N. Quick explanation. The C took it out because that's for the creation. Rain is his rule. Me, the metaphoric or symbolism of rain is like my vision, my life, darkness. Imagine darkness. You have to have some type of faith that you're not going to fall, fall off the cliff. So that's where I get black. Uh, this piece here is uh, Generation X. I love it. Hope you do too. My style is a little bit different. That's why I love poetry because it's just ever changing. Mm -hmm. To be is to exist. Existing without purpose, that's living without personal growth. And unfulfilling of our ancestors' oath, I want to be the next generation. The generation of belief, inception of faith, is incubated in our speech. From the roots, through the trunk, to the branch of a leaf. The emotions of overflowing possibilities swell the heart, constricting doubt, fortified by determination. I want to be the next generation. Your bullying is trampled by the hooves of security. Indifferences make, shift, shape, form, prosperity, disillusion by charity, confirmation, human parity. Worthy, I'd say, I want to be the next generation. The generation where movers and shakers, givers, replacers, seizers of opportunity, everlasting foundation makers, Casting seeds upon good soil, that's fruits of inspiration. See, I want to be the next generation. Mm. 
sorry, y'all. I keep these things all in my head. I got many things going on here. But uh, the creation of a new hybrid language that extinguishes the flames of suicide, manifesting an embracing of individuality, that sublime penetration. I still want to be the next generation. The creation of a force that compels one to succeed, reaching, ascending beyond limitations, simplification of complex matters, disbursement of chatters, carrying the cures for cancers, redirecting these monetary answers, because mankind is the beneficiary of destiny. So I'm asking each one to teach one to be the next generation. Thank you for my stomach. Thank you. Anyone else want to be recorded? No? Okay. So we're going to drop the cameras and then we're going to do a recording and then we'll go. Thank you, live people.